if we stop to think about how do we gamify something, and I believe it actually starts with a gameplay mindset. You may not realize that selling or doing something, it could be more of a game. If someone's to go play golf, they pick up a bag of uh, golf clubs, they pick up a bag of golf balls, and they go out and play around the golf. Now, they could treat this as not really a game, meaning they could go out and swing the club a bunch of times and just try to hit the ball as much as possible. But if they really embrace the sport, which most golfers do this, they will realize that there are things that they can do to improve their performance. That there are a lot of mechanics that they can study and practice. That there's a lot of equipment that they can add or change out. And those changes and that level of energy and effort and different change in mindset will lead to better performance than if you just go out and swing the clubs as many times as you can. It starts with a change of mindset. Applying that to selling is that you could go out and just be yourself and work hard. You might sell a certain amount, but if you realize that it's a game and that you can develop your skill, but it begins with the mindset. Either, either you're a sales manager or you're a salesperson and realizing that this is a game and I can either improve as a player and improve the, my odds of winning or improve my overall performance or I can just think I'm going to be me and I'm going to work hard and it's either going to work well or it's not. And then of course you're going to define your target goals which typically this has already been done. You typically have some quota handed to you. That's part of the process is defining your goals. You might break the goal down of annual quota into quarterly quota or weekly quota or I know you know some sales organizations break the annual quota down into a certain number of meetings per week, a certain number of appointments, and so that's going in a, into a step in the right direction. And the next step here would be to break down the goals into, into objectives that lead to those goals. But the key thing here that I think a lot of sales organizations don't do is to break down the objectives into tasks and, and activities. Let's say you've broken it down to salesperson, you need to get this many meetings per week or generate this many leads. That's good, okay? That's a step in the right direction. But what are the tasks and the activities that lead to the setting of the appointment? In most cases, it might be uh, the number of, of networking events that you attend, the number of cal uh, outbound calls you make, the number of campaigns, email campaigns you launch. So that's what I would tell you to do is, break down the tasks that lead to the objectives. And if you think about this in terms of a game, whether it's a video game or a board game or a sport, you just don't have, okay, the goal is to win, now go win. Any type of game that you play, you'll have to go through certain levels or you'll have to do certain processes. I mean, even if you think of the game of Monopoly, you have to go around the board and you have to roll the dice and you have to move the piece. So what are those individual tasks? And what I would say is, is break those down. Then not only do you want to break down the different things that you need to do, you could almost think of those as the rules of the game. These are the thing, these, this is the process that I need to go through. I'm going to move my game piece around the board in a clockwise order at, according to how many times I roll the dice and I need to do these certain actions, but also embrace that there's typically a strategy for winning the game. Let's go back to Monopoly. In Monopoly, you want to you want to get all the properties of a certain uh, area and that allows you to build houses and hotels and that's what can lead to you making money. Well, there's a little bit of logic and game theory in that strategy and the same thing applies if you're going to gamify really anything. If we're going to race somebody to the end of the street, there's a strategy to how we exert our energy. Maybe we knew, we, we put it all out in a short sprint or maybe it, we, it's a long distance and we need to pace ourselves. Well, with sales, there's a strategy. Maybe there's a certain logic to how we attack our territory. Maybe there's a certain logic to how we use the phone and use email or de develop our sales pitch or design a campaign. So embrace the, maybe external strategies or new strategies or your own strategy or be open to the, to the concept that there is a strategy that can be used to improve your performance at the particular game. I talked about breaking down the goals into objectives and tasks and activities and and so I think key with any game is measuring performance. Think about any sport. Take basketball, for example. 
it, or or any game there's a score that's kept that's kept track of and then you know there's a number of points that are accrued on each level and there's a there's a number of bonus points that are calculated if you like if going back to basketball there's a score for the the game at the end of the game but there was a halftime score there was a first quarter score there's also a number of points for each player there's also a ton of other metrics calculated such as number of assists number of rebounds uh, points per game and whatnot. You want to gather the data for the different activities that you're performing, the activities that are going to lead to you reaching your ob objectives, and the, the objectives that are going to lead to you reaching your goals. You want to keep track of the activities and measure that performance. And, and the key to that is not just gathering that data, but making it accessible to the, game, to the player of the game. So not just to the manager, but if you're the, the basketball player on the team, you want to know what your average points per game are because you want to know whether those are going up or going down. You want to know if you have a certain goal for number of assists per game, then you want to know how many assists you had last night. You want to have visibility into your performance and know exactly where you stand so that you can know how you're trending. That can tell you a lot of great things. If you can know how you're trending, if you're trending in the right direction, that can make you feel good. If you're trending downward, that can be good in even better information because it can give you that feeling of urgency and feel notification that you need to change and make some changes. So visibility and access to data is extremely critical when you try to gamify something, especially sales. Uh, there could be a repercussion for not performing well, and I, I think there already is this already in, in, any, in most sales roles. If you don't sell over a period of time, most likely you're not going to be working for that company forever. Uh, you'll be, you know, forced out, pushed out, whatever, uh, or you'll leave on your own. Just as in any game, you there's a winner and there's a loser, and um, and so that might not be something you need to add. You could look at uh, if you're measuring certain tasks, you could look at uh, any repercussions for not reaching certain mini goals or mini objectives. But and then when you gamify something, there's some level of competition. Most sports and games, you're, pl you're competing against somebody else, but competition in sales gamifications, pretty straightforward because you're typically on a team with other salespeople. So creating competition amongst the team is really key and critical or helpful in, in terms of gamifying. So those are just some tips on how to gamify something